How's it going, everybody? Wherever you listen to this podcast right here, this is episode 142 of the Temper Zone podcast with your host, me, a man, Max, and that's all facts. And ladies and gentlemen, my special guest in the Zoom building is somebody who has shown some of y'all that that hard work and dedication be paying off, man. My dude right here is just um, grinding, grinding and doing so much in a year span that it's absolutely insane to see like i'm i'm seeing i'm seeing dude pull shit off in the time span that he has i'm just like yo this is like you you can't teach that you know what i mean and um you know it was only right that i had uh this guest on for tzp he's even rocking the shirt man he ready to go i got the merch on you know what time it is <laughs> yeah sorry man. new merch coming out soon too ladies and gentlemen i got tj particularly on the zoom building what's good dog what's going on man shit <laughs> Oh, man. It feels great to finally be on the Tempest Zone podcast. Um, you know, I've been looking forward to this. And uh, I mean, I always try to tune in as often as I can. And uh, yeah, man, I, I really appreciate the kind words. The microphone my own is in the building. So my, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one, man. See, like, you know, you, you I feel like, you know, I'm going to just hit you with the gate with this question, man. But I feel like you are very calculated and know what you need to do in terms of this whole rap shit and like, you know, trying to like market yourself. Are you, do you, do you try? Are you just going with the flow and things come to you? Like, you know, coming up with the microphone of Dawn and, 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 you know, you know, you know, drop, you know, 20 track album. Like, are you just doing shit? Are you like, no, cause I'm seeing how you move it, TJ. And I'm like, he is checking off boxes you. that experienced rappers I know. I'm sorry <laughs> just to call people out like that, but they ain't doing this shit, TJ. Sure. So what's your what's that strategy like for you when you're trying to come up with all these things? That's a great question. And I've been surprising myself with that answer sometimes because I think <laughs> sometimes yes and sometimes no. I have just been on like go mode in a way where like, and you know me, I can be super ADD. So it's like there's <laughs> things that I don't notice in the moment that fluidly I notice later, or maybe other people notice and I haven't yet. So it's like, and I've been hearing that feedback from some people. Sometimes when I hear one of my songs again and again, I'm like, oh wait, or, you know, the sequential order of reinventing the wheel, like I've been talking about, like, uh, yes and no. I mean, it's just, I, I try to kind of do things in a calculated manner with what my roots are, you know, the microphone, my own, the Italian American on the microphone, um, you know, trying to just, do it genuine, be me and put myself out there. But uh, at the same time, there's things that just kind of occur like that video that I posted downtown last week uh, on my Instagram announcing the day after, you know, announcing the album and Nick and I had talked about it and we were like, you know, there's gotta be a way that now it's like, all right, I've done all the promos with uh, my buddy, Matt Horoski from Charleston, uh, uh, originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania, shout out Matt Horoski. Uh, he's helped me build my brand uh, and the Italian dynamics of it too, uh, tremendously since I've been down here and, uh, you know, shout out to him. He's worked with some really big artists. Um, and you know, not just here, but like, you know, in the South and in general, but anyhow, Nick and I, you know, had talked about me putting out a video to just kind of give some small shout outs, get the yeah. word out there. Um, and my phone kept falling and I didn't want to give up on the video. And I realized it was just like, who I was. So I was like, I'll just post it the way it is. Like, I don't need to be insecure about this, like self security, have fun with it. And, uh, so, you know, I realized that like everything happened in the right order. And like, mm -hmm. I literally was going to meet Horoski to go grab, grab a drink and hang out. And I'm like, Oh, so I haven't posted this yet. And I'm going to listen to it like a little later, but I hope everything went the way that I wanted it to. And you know, when you're like out and about, you can't like do things the same calculated way. Like, yeah, I mean, Boston's a quieter city than the city of Boston, but you know, I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm really impressed with how this just like fluidly happened when it was super like unsystematic because the phone kept falling and I didn't know how details were going to go. But <laughs> it came out the way I wanted it to in the end. So, uh, yeah. you know, and the way Nick and I had talked about it in terms of what was discussed and just trying to because, you know, me even right now, it's hard for me to be concise sometimes. But uh, <laughs> you know, if I lose nah, my audience, good, then I apologize always. But uh, nah, nah, you know, I am worry, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. That's the that's the beautiful part of a podcast, man. We can you can come on here and get your shit off. I'm much easier just, with you, homie. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man. It's the whole this platform, you know. This is your episode, dog. You know what I mean? You know, if you want to get your shit off, by all means, I can. You know, I can make this episode as long as I feel it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So, sure. um, 
Yeah, man. Um, but, in time, man. Exactly, bro. Exactly, man. Um, I don't sure. got constraints. This ain't TV. Oh, well, we're out of time now. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we are. Yeah, that's the like, beauty of podcasting, bro. Beauty of pi- podcasting. Yes, sir. Um, you know, when when I um see you know the amount that you know you're working and putting out and you know keeping up with all that stuff i I wonder sometimes if you know you moving out to south carolina has anything to do with that so i'm I'm wondering like what's it like move you know being moved out there and you know being in a new state like that you know this is your first time ever moving out of mass yes sir uh and man it has been eye-opening um a lot of changes have happened in the last year for me um i have already lived in more than one place in this city um in a year's time and uh you know i have felt extremely inspired in a lot of ways uh that has been a big push for this project um you know i was inspired prior to coming down and you know getting in the studio with you um jeff david um and kava you know yusuf and really sort of uh you know like i say in the last song of my project that's a wrap uh max 108 and kava helped me off my training wheels <laughs> so you know that's a special line for me that it really just kind of fit and it made sense and you know i'm still learning a lot about the space of hip-hop the overall local music scene in charleston south carolina um and applying what i've already learned in in the city of boston which is the roots of my origin and it's a really special place to me and i talk about it every single day uh People won't ever hear the end of that uh, for me down here, but I do it in a polite way. And I try to yeah. explain to people that I'm from an East Coast Peninsula city, too. And a lot of people get it. Um, there's a lot of transplants in this city. There's a lot of locals in this city. It's an extremely big melting pot, just like Boston is. It's just less large. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Anybody who hasn't been to the city of Charleston, South Carolina is missing out. Uh, it's a really special place. And uh, it's a place that I could see myself in for long periods of time. Um, Do I have that for certain yet? I don't know. Um, But it's a place that's helped inspire me. And the local music scene out here, for everybody who's listening and and tuning into this episode, just know uh, it's a special place. And there's a lot of low-key, high-key things that go on in this city. and yeah. it, I mean, just even seeing shows like being a fan because you know me i'm a fan first as well so you know uh going to shows like in boston you know at bars over bars media musically sincere throwing shows uh shout out sincere um you know help put me on gave me a show that you were also on the bill for uh the day after christmas uh yeah number of 2022 mm-hmm. you know uh having you know outlets like that having outlets here like uh the grilled cheese show um you know savant music coming out of chicago doing his thing down here uh i mean just the list goes on and on charleston underground which is really building a huge repertoire uh the hip-hop artist of the year uh tyree young um clayton james who moved to new york who was rapping in charleston i mean there's dj dollar menu i mean that dude's the goat uh mm-hmm. mike Lyle. you know there's some indie gold There's some big people out here that have helped to inspire me and have guided me and continue to guide me. And I have some new future goals in this city coming up too as well. Uh, But, you know, it doesn't take away from where I come from and the roots of who I am and who I'd like to be. And I'm still figuring that out day by day. But, uh, you know, I I owe a lot of people a lot of credit to help that have helped inspire me in, Mm. in both of those East Coast historic peninsula cities so yeah, make no mistake. yeah peninsula my song on uh on reinvent to the wheel with jeff porter and something new you know that title has a lot to do with where i come from and where i am mm-hmm. you know in it's most simple form of a title yeah so, that dude that, and that's the a, pen right yeah, 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 no, uh, doctor, tell, you know me in my rap style so it's a it's a dual edge on that one mm-hmm. no nah, that's a good one man and i you know that's obviously one of the the many dope tracks on this project, man. And I guess you know we'll just get right into it with this project, man. Reinventing the wheel, bro. You you gave them twenty songs, man. That's <laughs> holy shit, bro. When I saw the track list and how many features and the cover, everything, I'm like, yo, TJ going off like 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 somebody pissed him off or he's just this man is inspired, bro. And and then when I went, I knew it was gonna be dope, and I listened to it. I was like, there's no way he he gonna miss with this project, man. And I was. 
you know, very, very uh, uh, just 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 happy to see the progression, man. You know what I mean? Especially your chorus game, bro. You, you be <laughs> you be good with the chorus. It's always been there. That's one thing I had going for me. So I was lucky on that end. Bro, yo, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about yo the sh- my shit for you right now, yo. This dude TJ man is is nice with the hooks, bro. All right, some 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 rappers don't don't got it like that, man. But them them hooks are them hooks are, hooks are catchy, man. Um, I you know I guess to ask you, bro, just the, the the title reinventing the wheel. I think that's a very bold title for an album, especially you know you make this being your first album as a rapper. Let's just talk about why you would title it that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Well, first things first, and I'll, I'll say something on that, but just to say, you know, I thought uh, I thought Nikki Lovin was going to behead me at one point for dropping this many songs at once. He's helped me kind of mediate a lot of this, and he's like, dude, you know, yeah. like, maybe you should think about shortening it, maybe, you know, and no disrespect to Nick. I, I respect Nick's advice so much. He is one of my great friends, fast friends. Uh, for those of you that don't know Nick Lovin, he is from Connecticut now uh, by way of uh, Austin, Texas. And, uh, you know, I mean, Nick's down south as well, and we try to stay connected. And he really has helped me to systematically mediate a lot of things. He did a lot of beats on the project. He had an MC feature. Look out for Nick Lovin, man. He's a dangerous MC when he gets rolling. So no, Nick um, a beast, bro. Shout out to him. more in the future as well. And, uh, you know, but uh, so, you know, I realized sequentially within title, within the origin of the musical arrangements of these beats that it needed to be done. And I, and I've even, you know, cut a few songs that I wanted to be on this project. Um, and that's five. So, yeah. You know, I guess to dive into the title and I kind of have something written down that kind of meant something to me that I wanted to kind of go off of too. No, um, go for it, man. Go you know, ahead. and so reinventing the wheel to me means, you know, doing music in a light that I've never showcased uh, before. Uh, through recording to any audience. Um, you know, I grew up playing guitar and singing in a rock and reggae band um, at age 16, playing guitar since age 13. Um, so those are kind of the musical roots for me, you know, my origins. Um, I've grown into kind of dabbling on bass guitar, which I did do a bass line on the song uh, Neo Soul Bomb that was produced primarily by Ben Beam. Shout out Ben Beam, Charleston, South Carolina, the master curator and promoter of Charleston Underground. Um, and, um, uh, Sleepy C also is featured on that track. Uh, my ch- mm-hmm. first Charleston MC to be featured on a track. So that's a really big one for me. Really special. Yeah. One of the most down to earth people you'll meet, uh, from Somerville, South Carolina. It's kind of like the Somerville in mass, just North of the city, <laughs> um, big city. Um, and so, you know, again, a really special, special part of the project to me, um, But yeah, you know, in other words, reinventing yourself and doing something that you have done before, but in a different light than anyone else has ever seen it, you know, including yourself, like proving that to yourself. You know, Um, this project really showcases a lot of other artists and influences and important musical arrangements from great producers to help portray just that, you know, and uh, with a lot of boom bap hip hop sounds, Mm -hmm. relentless rhymes, heartfelt choruses. vocal harmonizations, guitars, constant pictures that I'm trying to paint in a colorful way. And this is the biggest musical accomplishment um, that I've ever arranged, created and executed. Um, I was in a band, like I said, you know, in high school, one size fits most. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, that helped me to build who I am as an artist. But we never really recorded much music. I mean, this was 2009. Yeah. There wasn't many DSPs out there, you know. Um, and it was just a lot harder to record music in 2009. Yeah, it I cost mean, way it, more money. <laughs> yeah, it was it's just a lot harder. It was, yeah. Shout out Bandcamp. Bandcamp was out then. Still is. Yeah, still uh, anybody is. uses Bandcamp? Wild, that's, of course. that's really fucking cool. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, for um, sure. I got to get into that. Um, Me too. And, you know, <laughs> Long and short, this project is uh, meant to be digested um, from start to finish sequentially in order. I do not feel disrespected if somebody finds a rhyme, a beat, a song that they connect with. I know this day and age is a busy place, um, but it means a lot to me to find some of my friends and family and new people that I've connected with. Uh, you know, that includes in Charleston, uh, friends in Charleston, 
other local artists here that that can actually you know listen to it start to finish it's exactly according to spotify an hour and two minutes long so it is a bit of time it's a chunk of time there are some long ones on there there's some short ones on there but uh you know reinventing the wheel is uh out now on all streaming platforms as of march 31st 2023 mm. yeah man um yeah uh, great, great, great! Uh, you know, summary about you know the. I was project. reading out the teleprompter over here. Nah, but, uh, hey man, nah, I think it's I think it's great. You know, like let it be known and make sure you you ain't missing anything out of it that you want to let the people know, man. And you know, one thing I definitely noticed with the project, you know, you're you're shouting out artists from Mass. You're shouting out people you uh, you mess with, and I just think that's something very commendable because. You know, in the rap space, you know, we ain't trying to I think some yeah, people ain't trying to talk about other people's names. You know what I mean? And trying to avoid the fact like, you know, they know this person, that person. Um, I say all that to ask this, though. What do you think it is just about, you know, the hip hop space where you're not seeing many people, you know, shine light on others? Because I, I feel like obviously someone with you, like you're very you, you don't care, like. You, you mess with someone, you'll repost their shit, reshare it. All oh, that's right. But there's all yeah. artists who are the opposite. Why do you think that is from your perspective? Um, I have a good answer for that. One thing I want to say, too, is, you know, just to kind of finish off, you know, in, within reinventing. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. there's a very key component to this project in a person that's inspired me to become an artist, um, you know, from an instant connection on a night in. June of 2021, and his <laughs> name is Amir McDonald, and yeah, man. Uh, he hosts the Tip His Own podcast. Not sure if you heard of him or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Yeah, yeah he likes I'll smoked stop. ribs too. I know that. Um, oh man, yeah, we're, we're gonna explain. We, we, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll explain yeah. that in a bit. Yeah, I, I had no, that no, plan. No. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my soul, man, and my heart, Amir. Uh, Amir Max, ladies and gentlemen, uh, unbelievable artists. He just said that I like to support local artists. Well, yeah, it, it starts there. Um, it goes a long way, man. A lot, a lot of artists don't want to support other <laughs> people they know. It, I don't get it. I never understood it. So, yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing, man. Uh, look out for, um, for, for two tracks on Reinventing the Wheel. Um, Still Life, the On Our Way interlude is produced by Amir Max. I added some production on guitar, but make no mistake, Amir was our, also on guitar in that song. Um, and it's very sparked. simple. <laughs> yes, sir. No, yeah, fully sparked. Also, a, a great verse um, from Amir Max, also featuring CXP. Shout out to Quiet Fire Beats. Mm -hmm. He produced a great uh, beat as well as a few others on this project. So you know, um, first and foremost, that is uh, that is where the roots of uh, supporting local artists um, has has stemmed from, and you know. Uh, being able to be a fan first is something that I think is, it's who I am. I'm a fan first. I love music. Um, you know, Nick Lovin and I connect on that as well. I think solely, you know, I noticed that about Nick. So it's great having that, that, uh, relationship with him because, you know, we get excited by, uh, the overall like appreciation of what people are doing with mm -hmm. their sound, their artistry, their vocal styles, what they bring to the table, what influence, that's a big word we always talk about is influence and, and what, you know, what kind of bubble map do they have that creates them as an artist? You know, who, who do they, which, which, uh, berry trees do they pick from? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. kind of being able to like curate from that. And sometimes it's unique and there's not a lot of comparison, but you know, Fuck all the bullshit, man. I'm always somebody who says, and I hope certain artists don't take it the wrong way because everyone who knows me knows that I say, oh, I'm hearing this and that and the other thing. And, and that's not to say somebody isn't an original artist. It's to say these things are reminiscent for me. So I like it even more because of that. And I think people sometimes are afraid to admit that. And it's OK to admit that. Um, sometimes we don't always have those answers. Um, and, and that's OK, too. Um, but you know, I'm a fan first, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I think sometimes, uh, certain, certain times people, uh, are just afraid to show appreciation for others that are considered their colleagues, you know, the, you know, right. uh, we're, you know, sometimes how it it's competitive nature. 
Yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, rap being an extremely competitive genre, man. You know what I'm saying? And I think people look at it as it can be, uh, it can mess up their their image and what they're going for. But I feel like in 2023, like, especially in this day and age, like, like the more personable you are about who, who you are, like, I think the better. Like, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I never understood any of that stuff. Like, to be honest with you, man, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely something that needs to die off. But I think sometimes it's people just don't keep up with music like that in general, too. I think, you right. know, like, so it's not sometimes people are just haters. They just, they, they barely keep up with music, you know, like they're like, no. so it's, it's tough. It's funny. Yeah. I find myself, <laughs> Keeping up with so many local artists now that I'm and like, you know, Jeff will be like, oh, so and so dropped. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I need to tap into that. Like, exactly. you know, and it's not like I'm missing everything, but there's things I'm missing. And I'm like, wow, that just shows how much, like, between two cities, you know, and performing in two states in less than a year, like, I've just been so absorbed in this. And it's like, I, I think some people might get the wrong idea about me. Like, they're like, oh, he's just, I mean, I can be an overbearing dude, don't get me wrong, but like, <laughs> you know, like with this, it's like for in a different way, like, you know, for different reason, like, you know, like, oh, he talks too much, like he should keep his mouth shut or like, you know, this dude sharing every this, that and the other. And it's like, well, yeah, dude, but I'm doing this from the heart. Like, this is who I am, like genuinely, you know, mm-hmm. Nikki and I don't like no clowns connect with the soul or to not this road right now. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. you know, from reinventing the wheel, that's like, that's my way of saying like, there's a lot of clowns in this game. And I'm not saying people that don't support their peers are, I just think people don't have a good reason not to sometimes. And I can sometimes see through it and just yeah. know I'm a genuine guy, but I'm also a critical guy. And it's part of the Italian nature of who I am. It's part of the dynamic of, <laughs> of what I was built on. But, you know, I mean, my father was one of the friendliest people in the world. Uh, he, he and I think that's where I get my gregarious yeah. nature from. Mm-hmm. So instilled but, in you, yeah. You know, it, but at the same time, like, you know, I I want to be able to have that like critical aspect of saying to someone, okay, this is how I, I feel about what's going on, or and I hope they can do the same with me. And I've got a lot to work on. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. No one perfect, uh, yeah, but I, I try to yeah. be an authentic person. You know. Yeah, exactly, man. And but it's um, not hard for me. And that's the thing. Like, I, and, and I'm not saying I'm better than anyone because of it either. It's just no. the lens that I've always seen through some say maybe from adversities that I faced. And otherwise, it's just the genetic makeup of who I am. But that too, man. Give it a buck, man. Yeah. You know? Some people just need to, you know, it's, it's about just getting older. Sometimes it's just about life yeah. experience. This is all that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, just, um, you know, just treat others kindly, move about in this industry with respect and, you know, just go about that in the right way. And I think, um, you know, uh, people will, you know, have a, a good, you know, respect about you, too. You know, I just think that's just the way I see it, man. And, you know, you're being yourself and it's not like, you know, you're trying to uh, you're not trying to be anyone else. Like it's just simple as that, man. You know, it's just it's right. as simple as that, you know? Um, exactly. But- and it's okay to go into character. Like I love, like I just posted something on my story last night about how, like, you know, I realized I was like sitting there in the moment, like, you know, kind of baked, but like really thinking about this, <laughs> like, just, yeah, you know, like just thinking like Tyler creator. I mean, like he's always had alter e- egos. Right. And like that 2009, 2010 movement of like seeing oh. that and like, how odd future Wolfgang was moving. Right. And like a lot of people can relate to like listening to that. And then like hearing how, like he goes into these characters and something so unique about him is how he can play all these characters. Right. And that's cool to me too. Don't get me wrong. Just cause I go by my name or like some AKAs, like <laughs> the microphone, my own Tiggy, whatever. It doesn't mean that I don't like love and respect the nature of character too. I just think exactly. there's kind of like a fine line. Like you still got to be yourself, but like be able to like, adapt into that character in like a way that balances for you, you know? And, and like Tyler, like I said, you know, um, not to get too ADD, sorry, but like, <laughs> it was very, you know, um, he, he's always been like, Hey, I've got Wolf Haley, Ace, the creator different. Like he would change the vocal pitches back then. Right. So, you'd know, oh, like, yeah. the, like, you'd know, like that ASAP low, low end. Right. Yeah. No, he's, uh, he's had many, many personas. Yeah. And then the song Dracula, he released many years ago in like 2010. I remember it being like the high pitched, you know, like I kind of use that influence in Neo soul bomb um, in the intro. Like, you know, when I'm discussing like the producer, like Ben Bean, Neo soul and all of that, you know, I use that. That's kind of influence from him there. And like, you know, um, but, but, 
him being able to play those characters, right? And just like, but still be authentically Tyler the Creator. That's what Tyler the Creator is. He's mm-hmm. meant to create. He creates different voices, different characters. Sometimes he puts long hair wigs on. Sometimes he doesn't. It's sometimes he's got to fit it on. Like it's just that's the nature of creating, right? But like mm-hmm. he's doing it in so many different ways that he says, no, 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 hold on. I'm not just this character. I'm not one character. I'm myself. I'm Tyler, the creator. That is my character. My character is playing other characters. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's, it's able to get different shit off by doing yeah. that and show it's off unique. that. Exactly. Yeah. So sh- sorry if I went off on a tangent there. Nah, nah, man. Hey, Tyler, the creator appreciation is always welcome on, on this <laughs> platform, dog. You know, I got, I got nothing bad to say about Tyler, the creator, yeah. man. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I definitely wanted to ask you though, with just, you know, you putting out all this music uh, with such you know, professionalism and, you know, making a, a solid body of work for somebody who's only been doing it so long in rap, in rap. Uh, you know, a lot of times people start rapping like when they're pretty young, you know what I mean? Like a kid when they're kids, I'll say kids, not young when they're when they're kids. You know what I mean? Like I started rapping at 10 and then and, and recorded music at 15, you know, if just for example. Different. Uh, <laughs> you want to be different. Want to be different, man. But you know, right. I, I I I say all that because you know I've seen other people who started young as well, especially um you know with rapping and you know for you to start at at, at thirty or say twenty nine or thirty. When did you start exactly? Well, I guess like, so, releasing music, releasing music, okay, releasing yeah. music, and being confident to put out raps. I mean, yeah. there's still some old SoundCloud songs that like. Lot, not a lot of people know about that. I did do like 10 years ago in 2012. I had this like little DJ rig. It was called the Hercules. I bought it from Guitar Center. It was 200 bucks. They make a new modern one that's way better. But I used to chop up. I used to have fun. And when I started listening to like Pete Rock and, and uh, Jay Dilla when I was like, you know, 18, I had an internship. So maybe I'll rewind a little bit. Cause there's a little bit more substance to this story. No, for so, sure. Yeah. Cause like, I, it sounds like it's always been there. Cause obviously I've, I've, I've heard you freestyle before you started putting out music the way you are now. And I was like, I wouldn't mess around with you here you and there. You got that shit in you. <laughs> I remember like, this that. Is, they can rap. Like, like you could do this if you want to, man. Like, the first few times we like chilled, like I remember that. And that's funny. You remember that. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I appreciate you dog. Um, you got, you got the knowledge. This is why this is a great interview. Cause you, you've seen the growth of me like at its fullest. I have bro. Oh yeah. It didn't didn't surprise me, man. It's just dope to see the work ethic kick in, you know, talent's one thing, but work ethic's another. So, Hey, always appreciate you dog. And like, so yeah, I mean, 18 years old, um, I went to a vocational high school. So I had one week where I'd be at an internship and one week I'd be at school. And the internship week was, with uh newton local cable newton massachusetts local cable access center my boss he edited for one of the channels his brother was a local mc underground hip-hop artist and he was based in alston he did some shows and stuff in brooklyn new york too um his name was zeke subtext kreitzer and jesse kreitzer was his brother my boss Mm -hmm. so you know, Jesse kind of took me under his wing a bit. He showed me all this stuff. And then one day he said, TJ, let's go to a show in Austin tonight. I was 18. You know, he was in like his mid thirties. He's like, I'm taking you to a show tonight at Harper's Ferry at the time, which is now Brighton Music Hall and Brighton Ave in, you know, uh, Austin, Massachusetts, city of Boston mm-hmm. on an address. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> make no mistake. Just like Rosendale. God mm-hmm. damn it. Yes, um, sir. <laughs> and so, you know, um, he's like, I want you to come with me. This really dope underground artist named Jeru the Damager is uh, headlining and Zeke, my brother's opening. This is huge for him. Uh, you know, a lot of people who may not know Jeru the Damager, Jeru came up with Gangstar and the Gangstar Foundation. I have a snippet sample in the intro sample with a song on Reinventing the Wheel called City of Dreams. And he's in that. So definitely check that out. It's like the first 10 seconds of the song before the song starts. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out Trizzy. Trizzy's on that with me singing his heart out the chorus as well. Uh, shout out Lynn, Massachusetts. <laughs> and um, anyhow, so, you know, uh, Jeru is a legend, right? I saw him perform. I saw Zeke open and the rest is history, man. I mean, I remember fallen in love and there's a photo of me from like 2009 on my Facebook somewhere that shows me at that show. And I was like, pretending to like do a little turntable thing. And I was like super into it. And I think from there I started to like record stuff on SoundCloud and 
you know, um, with that influence, I kind of started to kind of write sometimes, sometimes I just freestyle, you know, smoke a lot of weed, just having fun, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that's where like that started. But, you know, for you rewind three years prior to that, I mean, I was, you know, playing rock and reggae music, like I said, in my band. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Music's always been in you. Music. Yeah. It was always there, but, but, um, you know, and, and, really backtracking to me as a kid. So, so put together the rock and reggae guitar, full band, five piece band thing, learning how to collaborate with others, um, learning how to make music collectively. Right. But you rewind my parents. Okay. You know, uh, my father, Tony, he passed away in January of 2002, but my dad was always big into like cool in the gang, James Brown. You hear me talk about those influences in my song, If Heaven Had a Phone, mm-hmm. uh, with David Ryan. Um, beautiful song that we arranged together. Very, very dope and, song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, produced by JFX. And uh, Charlie Kendall did some lead guitar, guitar teacher I met here in Charleston, one of the first musicians I met here. So shout out to Charlie Kendall, man. He's, I mean, that guy is just, I mean, went to Berkeley College of Music in Boston. So there's some mm-hmm. some Boston roots there too. Uh, really remarkable human being. Uh, I, I love Charlie Kendall. He's great. Um, yeah. Anyway, so my father was, uh, you know, somebody who was big on R&B, funk music, uh, soul, the roots of hip hop, right? What everybody loves sampling. And so, you know, my mother, Earth, Wind & Fire, North to 60, straight ahead, right? Hell yeah. So things like that really helped me to grow um, and be able to have that foundation. So uh, then I started to like really write reinventing the wheel. And I'm like, wow, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I'm supposed to put out a, a rap project. Like, you know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm somebody in my family that has taken different musical influences and used the knowledge and uh, you know, the exposure to help me build what I'm trying to build. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to lose the roots of where I came from when picking up a guitar and portraying myself as an artist in that lens as well. Yeah. yeah, You got to keep that on you always. Yeah. Always. always. Yeah. That's really the full circle story. You know, like it, it started with the timeline is hearing what the parents were playing, you know, even Mariah Carey, like it's funny, a female artist, female R and B like Ari Lennox, like there's so much stuff that like I listen to, that, you know, I don't always post about every day or that like, you know, there's so many layers to TJ as a music fan and wanting to bring in new things as an artist in the future, in the now. So mm-hmm. parents being in one size fits most teenager, Jesse Kreitzer, uh, influence from my internship and being exposed to his brother in the local hip hop scene. Um, and then, you know, now meeting Amir Max, uh, learning about Bars Over Bars Media uh, live platform shout out to hero the mc i mean our brother i mean just the guy that's really for the both of us uh, has helped build us and, and help us grow giving us that exposure that experience on a stage uh mm-hmm. you know whether it's in a local head shop smoke shop or like on a stage like the jungle community music club in somerville mass i mean mm-hmm. you know things like that so i mean it's full circle yeah man a lot just... of people don't know the depth of that about me but i hope that um you know anybody that tunes into this can can see that and, yeah uh, no nah, and <laughs> yeah no nah, it's good it's good you let people know man because like sometimes people getting it all fucked up you, you know you post a <laughs> post post some of you playing the guitar like oh, i didn't know you play all this and it's like you know i think for you i think that's dope no, that like, is. y'all gotta show these you gotta show let people know like i can do all these things and and you did it in the right way you know you didn't talk it you just showed them and i think um i think that you know is something people who have the 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 traits and qualities they gotta just show people like you can't tell people you gotta show them point blank period there's no way around it (laughs) right talk is cheap right so so cheap yeah and and i still think about that every day i'm like shit i said this i gotta back it up you know me i got a big italian motto mouth and sometimes (laughs) it can confuse people but uh you know the, the real ones that know me they understand and um yeah man and shout out you know what let's take a moment to just shout out amir max's Gibson SG guitar in the background of every single Tempest Zone podcast. So oh, yeah. I mean, that was that was live on on uh Still Life on our way interlude, reinventing the wheel, uh track mm-hmm. nine, I believe. So make no mistake. Um that is, uh, that. that's my that's my baby right there. That 
So yeah, no, I, I love that thing, man. Um, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That thing has been like that for the last month and a half. <laughs> That's okay. I, I been, go through those two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got Lavinez right there, man. Yeah, yeah, hell so, yeah. You know, yeah. I Tell use him. this mic a lot. Uh, I've been using this a good amount, but I could definitely, I could definitely pick up the uh, the Gibson SG a little bit more. I'll be honest Who's with you. Still on? You know, we know you're cooking. Yeah, so. yeah, but there's been a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to drop. I'm trying to drop a lot. I'll just say that. I don't want to. Yeah. I won't. Yeah, talk is cheap, like you said. I'm just gonna do it. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> yes. Just, just gonna do it, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking of talk is cheap, though, man. Was there any warning to anybody before you put out this project? Were you very meticulous about that stuff, or were um, you know, or was it just like bam, like? Just, you know, just let's just drop it. Let's just, you know, set, release date. We got everything ready to go. Man, I was like biting off more than I could chew at first. You warned <laughs> me. too. You were like, I, I remember this always sticks with me and it will in the future. Yeah. Uh, what did I say? It, it was very prominent when when curating and then thinking about releasing this project and promoting these projects. But hey, man, releasing a project takes a long time, TJ. You're going to know that this isn't an overnight process. And this is a process that you think you've checked off some, some check boxes and then you realize how many you have left when you have features and you're relying on other people and um, doing it in the studio and things of that nature, which I love all those people. They've made this project great, but um, you know, I had to kind of uh, light a fire a little bit sometimes and other times I really didn't at all. And I just needed to be patient and realize that patience is a virtue. And uh, yeah. be okay with that. And being in a new space around new people, talk is cheap, saying a lot, teasing it a lot, you know, especially early on when I didn't have a ton of promotion out yet, hadn't worked with Horoski too much yet. And, um, you know, I think being able to take my time and, and really get the best guidance that I've ever had as a musical artist from 100 Watt Studios, man, 100 Watt Studios. Oh, yeah, man. In West Ashley, South Carolina, Charleston County, it's Charleston on an address, make no mistake. Um, it's like the Alston to Boston, West Ashley to downtown gotcha. Charleston. Okay, yeah. yeah. To give to give you all back home in Massachusetts a Some concise context. Memory. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Context. Yeah. Thank you. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Scott and Devin, man, I mean, they have brought this project to life. Uh, Devin you know, has mixed for over 12 plus years. He, you know, had worked in Nashville um, with some notable names, people that we know, somebody we see on TV every day. And um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm blown away. Like I'm, I'm so grateful and honored to work around people that have, have worked at this high level. And I would work with anybody, man. I mean, but it's just, Go when you have those people around you for sure. I, I'm privileged. I am. And and it's been a privilege to work alongside these people. Scott has helped build my performance in the studio just like so tremendously. You know, um, I come to him with ideas. He helps enhance them. And we are building a relationship to continue that. And, uh, you know, those two men, I, I couldn't have done it without them. Uh, mm. I mean, I get the, my arm hair sticking up right now. Just about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's dope no. when you can find a connection like that in this game, oh, man, and have engineers, producers, artists that you can just hit up and have They're in a two things ready to go. Well here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and shout out Acid Hawk. Um, I've told some people about Acid Hawk from back home, and uh, they're, they have a really crazy cool rock and roll sound. Um, they're a two-piece band with a bass and drums and vocals. And Scott's bass splits the signal. So it kind of has that guitar type feel sound to it, but it's a bass and drums and it's electric. Mm. Um, and, you know, a lot of kind of drop detuning influence there and um, oh, yeah. stuff that you would love too, Max. I mean, you and I both love that kind of that sound and uh, they, hey, they do that, that way. Too, make no mistake. They're a band, they're engineers. They perform locally here in Charleston. Both of them are from Charleston County and so, I mean, those two are, are really remarkable people and, uh, I've, I, I owe them so much. So Damn. shout out to hundred watt. Yeah, man. Not enough for real, man. That's a big shout out right there, man. And, you know, considering everything I've heard from you, this episode, man, um, I know this project is a lot, 
uh, and you put a lot of your emotions and and yeah. and a lot of just blood, sweat, and tears on this track, man. Um, on this on this project, I should say. Yeah. Are you already like gearing up for after this? Are you chilling? Like, how? What is TJ doing right now after such a big release? Um, I got some stuff in the vault for sure. Um, I'm I may not have as much as many um you drop a toy track album you know i had to ask like what, what it, it, know, we, I, yeah <laughs> i'm looking across at somebody who's got a massive all um <laughs> wait i wasn't allowed to say that there's a lot, there's a lot <laughs> there there's a lot there <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> you always love that yeah um, oh yeah yeah man i'm you know uh i have ideas for things um i I wanted to say first and foremost, there's a few names that um, have been a part of this process that um, I wanted to be on this project and sequentially I had to limit myself a little bit, um, which sometimes I do too much in life and other times it's really hard for me, limiting um, that word. It's a big part of TJ's life and uh, it's unique. And I think, um, you know, there's some shout outs that, are stashed away that are that are going to be ready to go pretty soon um and i would like to create an ep called tiggy talk um which mm -hmm. is something that's on the radar i don't know how this is going to get organized yet i still have a long way to go but that's something in the future i'd like to do um and i know that's an important question and i'm glad you asked me that question because hey you just dropped this big thing so like are you going to keep going man what do you got going on you know so <laughs> i appreciate you asking that and i've been thinking i wonder how my audience might feel about that, you know, is like he dropped a lot at once. So what's the word? And um, mm -hmm. what the word is, is that during this process, there were some key elements. Um, when I went home for Christmas and the holidays, I got to see great people like you perform four times, uh, some short sets, but some notable ones. New Year's Eve got to perform on New Year's Day at night, uh, which we have a great photo from. Uh, it's on yep. part of the album canvases for reinventing yeah, on our okay. track, um, on our way. But also got to perform with David under his set and just stand on stage with him that night when I wasn't holding a mic. So that was that was great being mm -hmm. part of the 108 crew, real smooth, um, with Trizzy as well. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out Big City, Neighborhood Gardens, <laughs> um, Bars Over Bars, Media. Of course. Oh, um, yeah. All that. All that. But yeah, I, you know, um, I got to record two awesome songs, one of which released on Monday, actually. Shout out to Willie D. Willie D uh, released a yeah. song called Malcontent, which yeah. he had me. That's my third total feature now out. Hell so yeah, I've been on three songs, and that's the third one um, as a hip hop artist. And so uh, be sure to tune into that if you haven't. Willie D drops music all the time. He's got tremendous he amount of music in the vault. Yeah. Works with Louis Kyoto and Starfish Death Squad. And not to, I'm, I name drop a lot. I'm really sorry, but like, it's okay. these people influence me, man. And I, I like, they're amazing. <laughs> No, it's, I think it's well, great, man. I love I love the name dropping. I think it's I yeah. think it, it's nothing wrong with it. It's like you're saying bad about anything bad about anybody. So no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. plugging it in. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for oh, sure. Oh. And um, yeah, so so you know, Willie D, happy to the studio in Andover, um, at Starfish Death Squad Studios, um, Andover, Massachusetts, just uh twenty minutes back roads from my mom's house, I realized, uh, within the last year. So now that she moved back up to Wakefield and is on the North Shore. Um, I could be close to Lynn. I could be close to Andover, and that's great. Um, so, you know, also recorded a song with Willie D that we haven't dropped yet um, that I will be dropping at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and that is also featuring John Mikes from Mass oh. Made Media, who has a killer verse on there. And, man, he tore that one up. Willie tore that one up. Uh, I mean, it's it's called Rap Attack. So look out oh, you for have that. To. One. Yeah, if you're gonna name a song "Rap Attack," you better be rapping your ass off. That's yeah. So um, <laughs> to set the tone for y'all, um, mm. I have a song with Neek Rose um, that's called "Only Way Is Up" that I hope to drop in the future. Oh, um, okay, yeah, well. yeah. And uh, it's also got some influence and discussion about my nana who passed away in 2015, who lived to be 98 years old. Um, Neek I mean, is featured wow. on that one, like oh, I said, wow. so that's going to be a fun one. Um, and I have a song called Fuck Division that uh, mm. is produced by Nick Lovin and featuring Nick Lovin and Demon's Disciple. So that'll be that'll be in the works as well. 
Um, mm. Those are so. Those are the only secrets that I'm revealing right now. But those were part of the process of the reinventing the wheel process that didn't make the project. So I wanted to kind of give a shout out uh, to those songs and the artists that to help curate that as mm. well. Yeah, man. No, that's that's dope, man. That's dope. And uh, I guess the last thing I got to mention before uh, you know we get to the tail end of the episode, man. Um, uh, you mentioned the, the ribs. I, I, can't, I, I, I can't be, i can't believe you you mentioned it because uh, uh, i just wasn't ready for when you mentioned it i just had me die laughing man um <laughs> I, I told i me and tj were watching the red sox and the astros play and, after you know, the celtics game after the celtics game the celtics home opener 2022 right mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. we were at the causeway bar across the street i believe yeah yeah and um you know ALCS, I, I, red sox astros yeah, I've I've told this joke to another friend of mine too. So and it's funny because he found it funny when I told you. You found it also very funny. I was basically saying Dusty Baker, the the manager of the Astros. He I just he looks better yeah. in the game. Mm-hmm. No. Oh yeah, he. I just at first the only thing I could say I was like, man, he looked like he makes a mean rack of ribs, bro. Like he just looks like he knows the recipe, and it's, that shit gonna fall off the bone like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I almost spit it, my beer out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I almost spit my beer out laughing right there. I'm glad you found that so I funny, man. Yeah, I, I, I was just making an observation. I just oh, looked at him. I was like, he looks like he makes a mean rack of ribs. <laughs> you were like standing to it, like your elbow on the bar, like scholar, like you're like put your hand. It. And then looked up at the TV when you said it, and I just remember like backing it and being like. Man, that thing must be like like a twenty foot tall smoker in his backyard. He has to take yeah. a ladder to get up there and shit. Man, he don't just, fuck around. No, he don't is, fuck around. So if you guys listen to long and short, if you listen to the song "Get Fly," produced by Nick Love and uh, it's so okay, yeah. mm-hmm. on reinventing the wheel, um, there's a part of my verse where I say, and it might be like confusing and random. And it's like the song is <laughs> called "Get Fly," but really the Nick Love and sample is like "Get High, Get High." Yeah, so like, the, yeah. You're just trying to have bullshitting thoughts from smoking weed mm-hmm. and so basically there's a line in there that is uh no cap and dirt nasty red Sox number seven fuck the houston astros except for dusty mm-hmm. legend yeah. yeah plays into the joke except for dusty and vasquez because at the time when i had written that like last summer i wrote that i think or in like august and Christian Vasquez, the former Red Sox catcher, had just gotten traded to the Astros. So I said, mm. fuck the Houston Astros except for Dusty and Vasquez. And Vasquez was number seven on the Red Sox. So that's why that kind of tied in. Gotcha, um, yeah. And that's word to Amir Max. <laughs> Shit. And then I go right into the chorus. So that's like a reference to like, you know, Max and the inside joke. So mm, yeah, it's definitely, it's joke. A, yeah. <laughs> we didn't plan it, but we knew instinctively – yeah, it, it was gonna happen. So. Yeah, nah, man, I think that's great, dog. I just had to, I had to explain that one Inevitably. for the people listening, Inevitably. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's great, man. You, man. Yeah, and I got you, TJ, for real, for real, man. But before we wrap this one up, dog, I definitely gotta ask you, um, just because you got, you know, a bunch of experience with music, um, in different uh, fields that you've been in with it, you know, I gotta ask, man. I ask this for every guest I have on Tepazone Podcast. What's some advice you'd give to any artist that's starting out? Some points or tips that you would give them that you wish someone gave you when you started out in your musical journey? Yeah, man. Wow. Um, I think, you know, uh, find a way to build your self-security as a person and it'll help you to grow as an artist. Mm. But not only that, Please be a fan first. And you don't have to be a musician to be a good hip hop artist. It helps. Mm-hmm. And trust me, I've learned from experience. Not saying that I'm a great hip hop artist yet. Sorry, that came out the wrong way. But <laughs> I didn't take it that way. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Helps you to, to have a foundation to then do vocals, right? When you're a rapper, you're doing vocals. You're just yeah. delivering them in a different style than an opera singer would, right? Mm-hmm. Or um specific type of singer right so you have to get in tune with yourself in a way that makes sense for you and you don't always have to have the same delivery you don't always have to sound the same you don't have to do one type of beat i mean 
hell, I want to do more trap wave type stuff. I haven't been exposed mm. to that type of sound in hip hop enough. It's a big part of new hip hop culture. I mean, I'm sure. in 91. So a lot of y'all hear that in my sound. I've mm-hmm. influenced heavy by Pete Rock, a tribe called Quest, Jeru mm-hmm. the Damager, you know, Gangstar, like things like that. But, you know, I mean, I, I love reggae. Like I, you know, the Expendables, Revolution, uh, the Destinators out of Charleston, South Carolina. Big reggae scene in Charleston, um, coastal town by the beach. Mm-hmm. Why not? You know, um, I mean, takeaways, you know, indie music, uh, the strokes, like th- there's there's things that can help like you listening to, even if you've never picked up a guitar and sang, like if you can find those style of influences, then you can do anything. And I really mean that. And I, I truly believe that. I think yeah. you got to start somewhere, but you shouldn't music is meant to be an encyclopedia how many people do you and i know max that that know tons of stuff about different movies and they can recite things about movies and they have that style of encyclopedia mm-hmm. brain like some people can do both of those some people have it all but if you can find a way to build that for yourself in your mind with music you know no boundaries and i i truly believe that i've had influence from my parents but a lot of it i've dug up on my own I've had, like I told you, you know, my internship in high school, but yeah. I mean, shit, it's never ending. I mean, I learn from y'all all the time. Like, there's always so much to know, learn, bro. Jeff yeah. Porter got me into Crime Apple. I love Crime Apple. He's yeah. an yeah. underground artist. I would have never known if it wasn't for Jeff. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, um, I mean, really, it's just, you Being know, a student of the game, app, man. It, it yeah, helps everything. I love pop punk. Pop punk, Fall Out Boy mm-hmm. is a huge influence for me. One last thing I'll say related to this and kind of reinventing the wheel is yeah. that full disclosure, Fall Out Boy has a song off their first album called Reinventing the Wheel to Run Myself Over. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I ran myself over by dropping this finish set. No. <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> no, we only That's just a statement. <laughs> you dropping a 20 track album was absolutely a statement. Because not a lot like, of artists could or would do that. <laughs> yeah, man, mm-hmm. shit. And like, you know, and I'm not trying to be better than anyone. I'm just no, doing what just, I wanted to do, yeah, you know. It and, came naturally, for sure. And, and, it's, so, and it shows. But, you know, that that reinventing the wheel to run myself over, like, Fall Out Boy always brings this, like, tenacity and the style of Absolutely. vocal and music, like, that I connect heavy with, um, you know, which is another pleasure about having Nick Lovin in my life is because, you know, he was on, Nick was on tour with, you know, an emo pop punk band that he played in for a while. And, uh, you know, there's pictures of Nick, like, jumping in the air, like, <laughs> you know, doing cat jumps with an, a Gibson SG. Like, that dude's yeah. for real. Like, Absolutely. and that's a good example of someone who influences me. Someone who, like, it, like can do hip-hop, makes tremendous beats, samples all the time. But, like, his roots are, are like, deep, like, into the roots of, of pop punk and, like, picking up a guitar. And, like, so it's just, it's remarkable, like, to have influence like that and, I truly think that the future of music is is building into that um, slowly but surely. And and old school hip hop's popular again. It's coming back, Max. Like you see this, oh, of course. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. I love R and B. You know, like it's your R and B music has inspired me a ton. Uh, Jay Anthony as that, well. Man. You know, another local artist. I mean, it's just something new. Might be one of the best local MCs I've ever heard in my life. I mean, he's Crazy. just. He crazy. Just, he crazy. <laughs> Never yeah, ending, man. Never yeah. ending, so. It's so much. There's so much out there, dog. And it's on a tangent there, but no, nah, that's fine, man. No, no, you No, man. No, it's um it's just dope to see you uh, you know, be so appreciative of all the people around you and it's you know, results in you putting out this body of work, man. And um Love music, man. I'm glad yeah, exactly. And I'm glad that we were able to chop it all up, man, for real. Oh yeah. Hell Appreciate yeah, you having me on, man. Absolutely, dog. Podcast, Tim Pazon. Tim Y'all Pazon, can get man. your merch. Make yeah, no mistake. I, I'm working on the new shit, man. Don't worry. We're going to get some new merch, oh, too. Yeah. We, got, we got a new logo as well. We got the new logo, yep. So, you yeah. know, um, I'm pointing up to it for the... For Hell the, yeah, I was going to say, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, what can the people uh, follow you, man? What's some things you want to plug right before we wrap this up? Um, So I go by my full name on all digital streaming platforms. That's the letter T, the letter J, TJ, and then Patiglio, my very Italian last name. Um, <laughs> yeah, the microphone, yeah. Maron. For those of you that don't know, Maron is a ta- like a slang term for, there's different things when you look it up, but it also can be used as like a slang term for an Italian American. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. 
Italian American. And uh, my last name is spelled P E T T I G L I O, Patiglio. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, T J I G 7 on Instagram. Y'all can follow me. Um, all my music is on digital streaming platforms, though, like I said, under my full name. I'm trying to build the catalog, trying to collab uh, in Charleston and in Massachusetts. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I also am not on TikTok. Um, days go by and I keep thinking I should do it, but I have yet do to do it, that. Man. So you do it, we'll bro. see what the future mm-hmm. holds for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a government employee, so I won't get banned, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You'll, you'll be, you'll be uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hell yeah, y'all. Y'all heard it. TJ Patiglio. Thank you very much for being on Temple Zone Podcast once again, bro. Oh, yeah. Thank so you, uh, thank you once again there, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been another episode of Temple Zone Podcast. Make sure you tune in next week for a brand new episode. All righty, y'all. Peace out. Peace.